the channel. This is an enormous and beautiful piece of Scottish elm. It's, uh, it's quite a size. It's about 21 inches across by about two and a half inches deep. Uh, and it's gonna give us a few problems. But boy, is it gonna be fun. Uh, the problems are, first of all, I can handle 18 inches over the bed in normal configuration on my lathe. So this is gonna be all uh, with the headstock turned out. So it's gonna be outboard. So when you're turning outboard, you have to be very, very careful because you will never have tailstock support at any point. So we have to bear that in mind when we're turning. Uh, other problem is because the headstock is gonna be turned out, it's gonna be pointing away from my dust extraction and where all the camera mounts are set up. So I'm gonna to have to figure out completely new camera mounts, uh, where we're gonna put those and how we're gonna extract the dust when we start sanding this thing. Okay, anyway, we'll deal with one problem at a time. First of all, how to mount this. Uh, and I am prepared, I knew I was getting this, so I have got a nice large faceplate to use. That's the normal three inch faceplate I've been using up to now. As you can see, that just really won't be safe turning with something that size. It could be done, but no one would advise you do it. So that's what we're gonna use. Nice six inch faceplate with space for a dozen screws to be put in. First thing though, we're gonna find the center. Okay, that's firmly in place. So we'll rotate the headstock, see which angle we'll need to be at to get this turned, and then worry about the cameras. I'll bring you back in a second when I've got that set up. All right, I think we're all set up. Camera's in the right position. I've moved a light so we can get some lights shining on here so you can see properly. I've sharpened up. I've got my control box from a speed and stuff just there at the moment. I may move it to here I'll see how I feel as we go along. So, I'm not really not used to having this big piece of wood right in front of me like this. So we're gonna start turning slowly, carefully, and see how we get on. We'll talk about the design in a second. Well, we are cutting it, that's good. This elm is absolutely hard as nails. Oh boy, what a grain's coming through. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Right, we're gonna slowly start working in from these edges to try and get the bottom turn flat. There's a bit of a bow in this blank, so we'll just take things slow. We're not surprised by anything and keep going. So I'm going to go and sharpen up again because this is just brutal. The tip of the ball gouge is just getting ridiculously hot with this. 
I almost contemplated getting a carbide out to take off this surface initially, but uh, we'll carry on for a little while. I'm just gonna give this a, a little while to cool down, then I'll sharpen it up again. In terms of design, what I'm hoping to do is obviously, it's gonna be a large platter or something like that. So, nice gentle curve out. We need to have a 100 mil recess in the middle. So a nice foot either side of that. And to break up this huge distance we've got on this side, I think I might be putting beading. So we're gonna have a nice textured surface going across. But uh, we're a little way off that yet. So hopefully we'll get there. So nice chatoyance appearing already in this wood. So I can't wait to get a, a finish on this. Okay, just moved on to the carbide for a second just to see how it would get on and it hasn't done too badly. I was having great problem moving into the centre with the, the bowl gouge. I think it's because it's moving so slowly in comparative terms to the rest of the piece. So I'm going to go and sharpen up my gouge again and we'll carry on. But this is certainly proving more than a challenge than I ever thought it could be but we'll get there. Sharpen up again time. Okay, my next best step now is to create the tenon for our jaws. We're using a larger set of jaws than normal, which are 100 mil. So somewhere around there. And we'll create a foot on this. Not there, I think. Actually, there's plenty of wood outside of the uh, tenon to hold the jaws in place. Got a lovely curve, again on my tiptoes, got a lovely curve going out, which I'm very happy with. Still need to put a couple of touches in there and in there. But apart from that, I think we're nearly ready for doing some decoration. Now the beading work when I start, I'm not gonna take it all the way to the edge, because I need a little bit of wiggle room, because the, the top surface isn't flat. You can tell the difference on this edge here. We go from quite thick to thinner, which is probably well, actually that weight difference. There it is, that's what it is. Right, so I need a bit of wiggle room in these areas. So the beads are probably gonna take that much area of this plate. Right, let's quickly sort this and then we can start figuring out how to do that.
grab a ruler and a pencil, do some measuring, and I'll bring you back in a second and I'll figure out what, I, what I'm going to do. Okay, I figured it out. I've got my uh, end of my ruler kind of wedged in with the tool rest so I can follow this curve with the ruler. Right, I'm going to initially make out marks every centimetre going in two centimetres in from the edge. Put these marks in so you can see them in the way this is spinning. Right, I'm just going to spin that up, make sure I can see it. Okay, right, it's confession time. I'm not very good at beads. So why am I doing it, you may ask. It's an excellent question, I have no idea. If we always kind of back away from the things we're not very good at, then we'll never move forward. So I'm not very good at them, so I'm going to get better. I'm not going to say I'm going to become good, but I'm going to get better. I'll probably be a lot better by the end of done with this. Right, so I'm going to choose one in the middle, where the thickest kind of wood is, where I can do the least amount of damage. Probably that one there. And I'm going to put a, a, a bead there, see how I get on. And then if it works all right, then we'll do the rest. To put the bead in, I'm just going to do a simple cut, marking the surface with a, the end of my skew. And then probably using a spindle gouge, just gently round it off, round it over. Or I may use something else. We will see. Anyway, let's get these cuts in first. Yay, did it. That's the tool. Little uh, small round skew. Okay, right, I'm going to cut all the rest of these lines in and then start beading. Great, right, I'm going to start sanding. Uh, I haven't figured out a way of getting my dust hose over here yet, so I'm just going to unplug it, I think, and just try and drag it to this area. I might lock it in there. Right, I'll let you watch a bit of it, but then I shall bring you back when it's done. Just trying to scrape a bit of oh, tear out I had there, and it's got a horrible, horrible catch. It's going to be a slight redesign.
right, back to sanding. Right, I'm going to clean out the pores with isopropyl. The sanding was an absolute horror. It's, uh, the beadings look beautiful, but they don't make for interesting, good fun when you're sanding. And that catch as well. And I went back in to try and touch something up. Even to a slight redesign. All fun and games. But anyway, I'm really ready for the, the next step. There we go. All right, let that dry. And I'm going to put a sealer on. Okay, I'm going to put a, a shellac based sealer on this. I'm putting it on with a brush just so I can get it on into all the grooves nicely. Let this sit for a while, then I'll come back and determine whether I need another coat or not. I didn't go for the uh, blonde shellac because I think elm, especially Scottish elm, really looks better when it's at this kind of darker colour. It really is quite gorgeous. back in a little while and see how this is done. Okay, it's had two coats of sealer and it's nice and dry now so I'm just going to give it a light wire wooling before we put a top coat on. Just a quick clean off isopropyl, just to get any fibres from the, the wire wool. And I'll make up the finish. Okay, the finish we're going to use is one we've used a few times before. It's a 50-50 mix of raw linseed oil and shellac. Make sure it's mixed well. We can apply this with a tissue, you can apply it with a brush or whatever. But this stuff you can buff in after you put it on. You don't have to let it dry. You can put it straight on and then buff. I'll use the, the cloth we applied it with first of all to buff it in. And then I'll swap to a paper cloth to finish it off. Okay, before I take it off the lathe, I'm just going to apply, or just check out that my uh, jaws are going to fit. Oh my goodness. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. All right, we'll take this off and turn it around. Okay, we're turned around, we're ready to start hollowing out. Uh, I'm going to have to bring this width in a little bit because I've got a very, very sharp side here against a lot thicker here. So this was caused when we had to reshape the outside a little bit because of that horrible catch we got. So we'll start turning down, getting it flat, and then figure out the best way to reshape this outside.
That's got that edge back under control. That's about two and a half, three millimeters, and that's gonna be fine for the edge of this. So when I come back, bring the tail to rest back around, I'll start working this edge down. So we're cutting the whole lot. I think we'll take a rim to about there and then create the bowl from that bit. in a bucket of water to cool down for a second while we discuss the next steps. Right, that's pretty much the rim fine. I think the bowl's going to start about here and have a little raised lip as we go down. That may turn into a bead at the top, depends if I feel brave again, but I think that'd be a nice bit of decoration for it. So we'll start Taking this down, leave us a nice area here to do something with if we want to, and then hollow it out. cooling down I'm just gonna take a bit of material away with that car right. First, I've never experienced wood quite this hard before. It's a little bit ludicrous. Right, that's going to cool down. I'll carry on with the carbide again while that's cooling down. Then I'll resharpen and then bring bring that back into the clay. Done. Any other problems I can find with this surface, I'm going to have to do with sanding. So I'll set up for that. I'll let you watch it a little bit, and I'll bring you back when it's done. on this. There's some feathering going on in here which is just... I can't wait to put the finish on. Right, quickly with isopropyl uh, to clean out the grooves and then on with a shellac sealer. Just let that evaporate. Okay, I'll give this the same treatment I did the reverse side. 
couple of coats of shellac. Letting it dry in between coats and then we'll cut it back with wire wool. I'm so happy. Okay, we'll let this dry, give it another coat, and I'll bring you back for the finish. Putting the finish on, not the actual finish. Okay, we're ready for the final coat. Okay, it's the same mix of raw linseed oil and shellac. Put this on and then buff it in. Like before, I'm going to buff it in with this cloth and then switch to, a, switch to a dry cloth to remove any excess. Okay, I want to turn the workshop back to its normal state and we'll take a look at this finished butter. Well, there we have it. We managed a beautiful big Scottish elm platter. Or is it a charcuterie board? My wife uh, used that word to describe it and up until that point I had never heard that word before in my life. So it could be a charcuterie board. Uh, Probably why I haven't heard of it before, because I can't even say it. Charcuterie board. There we go. Right, well, boy, that was fun. And boy, that was hard. There wasn't really an element of this turning where I felt in complete control. I've never been quite so far out of my comfort zone in my entire life. But we have to try. And I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. The grain in this elm is just absolutely gorgeous. It's got some amazing chatoyance to it. It just changes in the light so much. I am absolutely over the moon. Ah, so pleased it's over. But I am going to be doing this again because I have, uh, unfortunately, ordered more pieces which are going to require outboard turning. So this was just the first of a few more to come. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you leave a comment, then you'll be entered into the giveaway, uh, which will be when we get to 10,000 subscribers. Probably a couple of months away, but the more times you comment, the more times, the more entries you have and the chances to win. So apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching. I'm going to go and have a lie down and I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you.